My Lords, let me uh, be clear where I stand on a couple of issues uh, before I start. Amongst other subjects, I studied philosophy of mind and philosophy of religion at university. I studied the latter because I, I, I was and I am a Christian. Uh, I'm also a twin, and reading John's Gospel along with Thomas, I said, my Lord and my God, on the evangelical side, you understand. Um, at university, we examine the essence of personal identity. We concluded the mind and not the body is what made someone the person that they are. A person disfigured beyond recognition was still the same person, but some who suffer serious head trauma, for example, change personality. A friend in Australia experienced this, describing his husband as not the person I married. A transgender man who honestly believes their female body does not reflect their true identity should be considered a man. That their mind and not their body is the essence of their identity. That's my honestly held belief. And like the noble Lord, Lord Winston, and the noble lady, Baroness Featherstone, I have received threats and abuse from both sides for even expressing an opinion on the subject, for even meeting those on both sides of the argument, so much for, for free speech. My Lords, Al Gore, the former Vice President of the United States, once described climate change as an inconvenient truth, and that's how I view my Christian belief set against my homosexuality. I believe that with God's help, I could be happy in a heterosexual marriage. I married Mary with genuine intentions to live together until death parted us. But what I uh, believed to be achievable with God's help turned out to be my version of Paul's thorn. Eventually, I had to accept the way that God made me. And my wife, who has been a great support to me ever since, accepted that as well. But I still suffer low self-confidence and self-esteem as a result of people constantly telling me I was not good enough just because I'm gay. My parents told me that homosexuality was abhorrent, so I felt I couldn't even discuss it with them. I was bullied at school because of it. My police colleagues targeted people like me, and my church told me it was sinful. Being constantly told that you're not good enough, that there is something wrong with you, that yes, God made you a loving, caring, sensual individual, but you cannot love the person you truly love because they are of the same sex, damages you. Conversion therapy is an intense version of the same thing. By all means, have an open discussion with someone about who they are or who they are attracted to, if that is what they want, without judgment, without blame, where the question, are you sure you're straight, is as valid as, are you sure you're gay? but not a, con a conversation designed to steer someone in one direction or another to ensure they conform with the other person in that conversation wants that person to be. If someone cannot be objective about gender identity and sexuality because of their own honestly held beliefs, they should not be having that conversation. I was a young police sergeant in Brixton when I took pity on two frozen female officers who were on foot patrol one night. I gave them a lift in my police car. They were whispering to each other in the back seat and I asked them what they were talking about. And one of them said to me, Sarge, why don't you just be yourself? And it changed my life. There is nothing more limiting, more damaging, more inauthentic than trying to be something or someone you are not. How many times do we criticize others for not being genuine? And yet conversion therapy is designed to do just that, to stop someone being genuine. Hence my joke, I hate actors because they're constantly trying to be someone they're not. Of course, some people may be unhappy with their gender identity or their sexuality, but the first question to those seeking help should be, if your family, if your friends, your religion, if society generally completely accepted you and loved you for who you are, would you really want to change? As the noble Lady Baroness Bert of Solihull has said, we should be concentrating on helping people to accept themselves for who they are, not trying to force them into being something that they are not. This bill as drafted may not be the answer, but something needs to be done to prevent lasting harm 
damage that begins in childhood, as the noble lady Baroness Butler Sloss has said. <laughs> 